as the weather cools and as we head into fall and winter, we change our clothing, but I always say we definitely should also consider changing our skincare as well. So today I'm going to talk about how to transition your skincare for fall and winter. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you live in a place that have four seasons or like for me in Minneapolis, where the winter is a little bit more extreme, then you definitely do not want to miss this video. So our skin is dynamic and a lot of times the changes that our skin goes through is really deeply impacted by external factors like the environment. So you really want to make sure that as the environment changes, your skincare reflects that to number one, better support your skin barrier, also to support your concerns. And lastly, to make sure that you like the way the products feel on your skin, especially making sure that it's doing strap properly during the winter time. But here I'm mostly referring to changing up the basics of your skincare that really is going to be important. So tip number one, I recommend changing your cleanser to a more creamier and hydrating cleanser instead of using a foamy cleanser. And also consider if you do wear a lot of makeup and sunscreen, instead of using makeup wipes, using a cleansing oil or cleansing balm, or even doing a double cleanse possibly to be a less aggressive on your skin. Mostly because, you know, there is this move against makeup wipes. I see a lot in social media. I personally am not a big fan, but I feel like they do have their place for convenience and what have you. But certainly makeup wipes with just the harsh rubbing and scrubbing of your skin in some ways is a little more aggressive for the winter, especially if you have sensitive skin. So I just recommend in general changing to more of a creamier cleanser or even cutting back on the frequency of cleansing from twice a day to once a day if you really do have sensitive and, and rosacea prone skin. One I do really recommend that recently I have have been using and this is not sponsored although I have worked with them on sponsored content but I purely am recommending because I do really love their product is the one from e.l.f. e.l.f.'s new line Pure Skin and this is a very creamy gentle cleanser fragrance free with oat milk allantoin and niacinamide that's very soothing and I certainly don't feel like my skin is really dry or taut after using this one and another cleanser I want to share with you that I really have been enjoying using the past few months is from The Clock and it's their double acid action exfoliating cleanser. And this is a creamy cleanser. It contains a blend of lactic, glycolic, and salicylic acid along with licorice, but it's not very aggressive and nor is it very irritating. And so certainly something that if you really like to have more of an active ingredient in cleanser to help remove some of that dead skin buildup to improve dullness, I recommend trying this one for the winter because it's just so creamy and gentle. And you guys know I'm a big fan of double cleansing. There's a lot of great cleansing balms oils, even micellar water can be a more gentle way of removing makeup. But one cleansing oil that I recently have been using and really, really loving, I just want to share with you guys, is from Enough Project. This is a K-Beauty brand and this is just such a lightly scented, amazingly scented cleansing oil that really does a great job at removing all of my waterproof mascara, eyeliner, and all the sunscreen that I like layer throughout the day. So highly recommend checking this one if you are a bake cleansing oil person. Tip number two, consider adding in a hydrating serum. I personally love Hyaluronic Acid Serums. I feel like there's so many out there now. I feel like it was really popular a few years back, but now it's kind of gotten lost amongst all the other ingredients out there. But I still feel like there's a place for Hyaluronic Acid Serum. You know, when your skin is dry, the appearance of wrinkles, fine lines, and dullness is, is gonna all come out. And so winter time, I feel like it's a perfect time to add back some Something hydrating and if you want a little something extra extra in addition to a moisturizer I think hyaluronic acid serums are great for that I wanted to share with you two of my favorites the first one is from Vichy and of course it's their most popular and this is just an empty bottle but they're mineral 89 I love this one because it's hydrating it's soothing it's great for all skin types the science behind this one's amazing not only does it just hydrate your skin but the ingredients in here especially like Vichy's volcano volcanic water in particular, they've done studies, really actually go beyond just hydrating your skin barrier. It also helps to defend against environmental aggressors. So highly recommend this one, not only just for the texture, but for all the science that Vichy has done and the way it feels. Another serum I really love that I'm actually using currently is from SkinCeuticals. They're hydrating B5 gel. Certainly more expensive. It contains hyaluronic acid,
acid and B5 vitamin, which is very soothing and protect up the skin barrier. But I love it because of how quickly it absorbs the way it feels really, or the fact that you don't really feel much on your skin when it's applied. It's fragrance free and really suitable for all skin types. Even if you have acne prone or oily skin, I think this is something that you certainly can use all year round just because it's so well absorbed into your skin. Something very similar in texture and still very well formulated is one from L'Oreal, the Revitalift 1.5% Hyaluronic Acid Serum. That one is also really nice because it absorbs really quickly and it's got a blend of different size hyaluronic acid. So it's able to instantly plump and hydrate your skin, but also have smaller molecules that goes deeper inside to maybe stimulate your body's production of hyaluronic acid and potentially may help with over time with use improving collagen. Tip number three, change your moisturizer. So here I'm also referring to your nighttime moisturizer. I find that as you're sleeping, that's when your skin is doing most of the repair. Adding in a richer, more nourishing moisturizer can really help your skin recover from you know all the abuse it's gotten throughout the day. And also if you live in a really cold place during the winter, your skin tends to lose more water as we sleep. So having a thicker moisturizer is not only going to help you wake up with more hydrated and healthier skin, but also help you better tolerate your topical retinoids too, if that is something you are going to be using throughout the winter time. A few products that I usually use and have been using now because the weather here has been actually cooled down quite a bit in, in Minneapolis. One is again from e.l.f. their pure skin line. And this is their moisturizer with similar ingredients, including oat milk, allantoin, and niacinamide. Not very thin thick but very nourishing moisturizer that when it's applied absorbs fairly quickly. If you have rosacea prone skin and your rosacea flares from cold and wind, then one I highly recommend checking out is from La Roche-Posay, the Tularian Ultra Soothing Repair Moisturizer. I wish they made this in a bigger bottle. Maybe they do, I just don't know it. But every time I go to drugstores, I only see this size. But this is a very rich and nourishing moisturizer, but not over the top heavy. But it's got a great blend of ingredients, including including a particular peptide called neurosensane that La Roche-Posay actually has in few of their Tularian lines that actually has clinically demonstrated to soothe and calm irritated skin, especially for those who are rosacea prone, actually has been shown to really work synergistically with a lot of your prescription rosacea medications and calming that redness and burning sensation. And I find that this is one that has really never ever burned on my skin. Another nighttime moisturizer that I really have been loving is from Biosense and it's their Bio on squalene plus omega repair cream a nourishing rich but not over the top heavy night cream that I think is is great. I mean, certainly you can use in the morning because it does absorb really nicely and doesn't really leave a greasy look to it. But certainly I think for most people, this can be a great nighttime one to use. Another one I want to mention, it is on the pricier side. It's from U Beauty and it's the Super Hydrator. And the science behind U Beauty is pretty cool, but it has to do with these delivery system that basically more effectively deliver the active ingredients to area that are more inflamed, if you will, that have more free radical formation. So they're by kind of targeting areas of need more effectively in the skin and then reducing irritation. One last product I want to mention is an overnight sleeping mask and that can be a great way to kind of boost your skin's hydration and improve your skin texture and improve your skin barrier function and repair while you sleep. And the one I really recommend is from Drunk Elephant, their F-Balm. And this is just a creamier moisturizer in my mind but does something in addition and certainly can layer this over your moisturizer. It's got a lot of great fatty acids, vitamins, and humectants. And I find this to do a little bit more better job for me in the winter than some of the traditional sleeping masks that are more gel-like formulation or gel cream that I find that my skin just feels kind of dry after using. So continue with this, you know, overnight repair. Tip number four is consider slugging a few times a week. And slugging is actually something I routinely do in the winter time to just keep my skin barrier healthy. Because aside from the actives that I use, winter here, in addition to the masks I have to use, wear on a daily basis for work is just really torturous on my skin. And I find that slugging is really the best and fastest way to help repair my skin hydration status and my skin moisture barrier. And there are lots of ways you can slug. Certainly like petrolatum is the standard way. For those who are not into super greasy petrolatum, I really love slugging with Cicaplast, for example, from La Roche-Posay, that Cicaplast B5 Balm. That's a really great thick moisturizer that's gonna be occlusive enough to prevent transit 
Pajama Water Loss, but it actually, you know, dries pretty quickly and very nicely that it doesn't feel super shiny or greasy afterwards. So certainly that's one option, but I recommend, highly recommend slugging and don't do it when you are noticing your skin is getting flaky and dry. Consider just adding that into your routine on a regular basis. So the next tip is to either cut back on frequency of your exfoliation or change up your exfoliants. So this is where if you are more into physical exfoliants and you did that for the summer, you may either want to stop physical exfoliants either in frequency or change them to a chemical exfoliant which is the latter is my favorite because you certainly get more out of chemical exfoliants than physical and so as far as the frequency in play around with it right so i say in general most people don't need to exfoliate more than three times a week so certainly this is where going down to two or just doing it once a week may be enough and then also think about maybe changing up the active ingredient in your exfoliant if you already are using chemical exfoliant so we know glycolic acid is the strongest but not everybody's able to tolerate glycolic acid for one. And certainly if you have more sensitive skin, but still want to use an exfoliant in your routine regularly without the irritation during the winter, I recommend checking out like lactic acid, for example. Mandelic acid is also a great one that's pretty gentle and great for hyperpigmentation, acne prone skin. And then one of my personal favorites is polyhydroxy acid because not only does it act as a gentle exfoliant, great for like sensitive rosacea prone skin, but also can serve as an antioxidant. And it's also as a great humectant too to help improve the fine lines and skin moisture barrier. So all of those are great options. One product I really recommend that does contain a blend of alpha hydroxy acids is the one from Verse, the Shortcut Overnight Facial Peel. So this is something, you know, certainly used like twice a week that can be your nighttime treatment. Another thing you can consider is maybe just using your active ingredients as, you know, your chemical exfoliating ingredients, but in a moisturizer formulation. So all you have to do is really just like cleanse and put that on and you're done. One I really like is from Extruvions, their overnight transformation complex that contains a blend of plant extracts, polyhydroxy acid, as well as hyaluronic acid in this rich and nourishing cream. So highly recommend checking this out if you're into simplifying your routine or just want a more nourishing, less irritating chemical exfoliant that will really improve your skin concerns, you know, over time with use is, is this one. And if you are looking into more of a glycolic acid based moisturizer that is nourishing and hydrating, but not really irritating, I've talked about this in my previous video and that's from Glytome and it's their Peptide Plus Overnight Moisturizer of cream with 6% free glycolic acid concentration, but it's in a very nourishing cream formulation and it's got peptides too that will help with anti-aging concerns. Tip number six is to rethink all of your actives. Do you really need all these products in your routine? Does it make sense? I personally don't recommend using more than two serums or two active ingredients per routine because I think it can really be a poor setup for, you know, skin irritation. And so certainly, you know, rethink those, right? Like what What's making sense here? What do you really need? Do you really need a 10% niacinamide serum if your moisturizer already has niacinamide in it that will probably do the same thing? So just rethink what you truly need in your routine. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, reconsider your sunscreens, right? So in the summertime, we all like to look less shiny, less greasy, and really gravitates toward those that are fast absorbing, maybe in gel cream formulations. But in the winter, at least for my skin, I find that gel creams can burn more easily. And so so I like to use more nourishing, richer creams. One that's actually sitting on my shelf right now is the one from Coco Kind, their daily SPF and a nourishing formulation. And it's pure mineral, 21% zinc oxide. So this is a great one. I'm also a big fan, you know, the whole La Roche-Posay and Helios line. And the one that I really recommend that has more hydrating properties is their Anhelios UV Correct SPF 70 with niacinamide. And this is a chemical sunscreen, but is more nourishing and more hydrating and a little bit more on the stickier side compared to the rest of their Anhelio formulation, which is what I recommend to everyone, especially for oily skin and especially to use during the summer because it just absorbs so nice without leaving any feel. But certainly this one is more hydrating and thereby kind of leaves more of a, like a feel to your skin, but it's not like over the top greasy at all. One last sunscreen I want to give a shout out to is from Kinship. Kinship Probiotic Moisturizing Sunscreen, SPF 32. And this is a pure mineral sunscreen. I actually used this last winter and really loved it. It was very nourishing and moisturizing, but not overly the top greasy or shiny. I, for some reason, find that a lot of mineral sunscreens, for some reason, 
reason, depending on the formulation, can actually cause more dryness on my skin. Like my skin actually feels more tight afterwards, but this one does not. Neither the one from Coco Kind. And so certainly if you are really more of a mineral sunscreen person, these two are must tries. And then I just want to wrap up this video with a few more additional winter skin tips, especially for the whole family. And if you're a mom with kids and babies suffering from dry skin and eczema. Number one, showering and bath every single day is absolutely fine. In fact, we encourage it. Now it's not always possible, but if possible, we recommend this because getting the skin wet and then putting on a moisturizer right away really is an opportunity for you to moisturize your skin, basically rehydrating the skin in that way. And so certainly it's encouraged if you're able to. The key is that when you are showering or bathing, keep the water temperature to comfortably warm, even though hot water may feel so nice in the winter, it really is irritating and drying on the skin. Two, watch where you're putting the soap. We don't need soap everywhere. For most people, including kids and babies, just armpits and buttocks in the groin area where we tend to sweat is all you need. And when you are using soap or cleansers, stick with more gentle formulations, you know, like bar soap that I really recommend. It's like the Dove Bar Sensitive Skin, the beauty bar. That is one that we've been using for years in our household. But certainly like Lipicar AP Cleanser or even the ones from CeraVe that are intended for face, you can certainly use them on your body too. Keep the shower time, bath time to no more than 10 to 15 minutes. And the key here is you want to pat your skin dry as soon as you come out of the shower. And literally that first 30 seconds to a minute when your skin is still soft and damp is absolutely the best time to put on the moisturizer. And that is where you're really gonna seal in all the water, all the hydration that your skin has received from the shower and minimizing water loss that would escape through the skin. And then lastly, consider adding a humidifier in your bedroom. Our skin loses a lot of water overnight as we're sleeping, especially during like the colder months in the winter. So humidifying your bedroom can be very helpful, not only with just dry skin, but also dry nose and chap lips. All right, guys, that's it. So that is my video on transition into fall winter skincare. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and what you think of them. Also comment below with any questions or other topic ideas you would like me to create. Again, I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye.